How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about being a new design student and what to expect when you're going into design school for the first time. If this video ends up being helpful to you, please subscribe to support the channel. All right, so the very first thing that I want you to know is to understand the fundamentals of design. The building blocks of good design are balance, contrast, hierarchy, alignment, repetition, proximity, and space. Understanding these things before you go into design school is gonna give you a big advantage. I've actually made a video talking about the fundamentals of design, and I'll put that in the description for you. But it's important to at least have a basic understanding of these things before you start trying to put elements together. Up next is software proficiency. Now, if you're gonna be a print or a poster designer, then I definitely want you to be familiar with Photoshop, Illustrator, and maybe InDesign as well. But Photoshop and Illustrator are definitely gonna be those two programs that you're gonna be using a lot. InDesign is a little bit more on the publishing side, but it's still widely used in print. And also, if you think that you might branch out into web, definitely learn Figma. Now, if you're gonna be going into design, there's a pretty good chance that you already know at least one of these programs. Personally, when I started in design school, I knew Photoshop pretty well, but I had never even opened Illustrator. In fact, it was very intimidating to me. However, once I started getting in there and learning the basics, it became kind of addictive. In fact, I spend more of my time now in Illustrator than I do in Photoshop. But having at least a basic understanding of the software before you go into design school is really gonna help you. And just in case you don't know, Adobe offers a plan for students and teachers where you get all the Creative Cloud apps for only $19.99 a month. It's a great price and definitely an investment after all, you're going to be using this software quite a bit. And of course, you need access to it in order to learn it and use it. Once you get your hands on the software, explore around, see what things do, click on tools and just see what happens. In my experience, that's the best way to learning the software is just get in there, see what things do and get your hands dirty. All right, next up is going to be portfolio development. From day one in design school, you need to be working on making a very strong portfolio. In general, your portfolio should have a really good variance of graphic design practices. Think of things like logo designs, posters, brochures, business cards, stationery, things like that. Make sure that you include your best work, not everything that you've done. Of course, it's a little bit early for talking about finalizing your portfolio. You'll do that as you get closer to graduation, but do your best at thinking ahead and remember that every project you work on is gonna sharpen your skills. And when it comes to portfolio work, you need to learn how to present it effectively. Your design professors will teach you how to do that, and I'll also be making more videos that'll help you develop your portfolio. Okay, this next one is a big one and it's very important, and that is accepting critique and feedback. Now, up to this point, most of you have been designing for yourself and just for fun in general. However, going to design school and becoming a graphic designer, that means that you are learning how to become a problem solver. I know that the art aspect of design is a lot of fun, but there's also a business side that you need to learn. You're gonna be learning all kinds of different skills and you need to be able to bring all of these skills together in order to solve problems. After all, that's what people are gonna be hiring you to do and accepting critiques and feedback is gonna help you tremendously. Remember that by and large, your professors are there to help you. And I would even say by extension, most of your classmates. Now, obviously there's gonna be a lot of opinion that's gonna come from professors and also other people in your class. But in general, everyone is there to learn and everyone should be there to help each other. You're gonna create something that you are so proud of and your professor is gonna come in and show you different angles of your approach to your work. They're gonna give you suggestions they're gonna ask you questions. None of these are personal attacks. They're not saying that the way you did it was wrong. They're saying, I wonder what would happen if you did it this way. So just be prepared for critiques and feedback and always remember that nobody is trying to attack you or your work. 99% of the time, everyone in that room is trying to make you a better designer. Always take the feedback and use it to improve your work. Okay, next up is time management and deadlines. Now I know that everybody functions differently when it comes to time management and deadlines, but you have to remember that you're gonna be going into the business world working with real clients. Most of the time, if not all of the time, you're gonna be juggling multiple projects at the same time. So definitely have some kind of time management solution, whether it's a software or just writing it down on a notepad. It doesn't really matter as long as you're doing it and it works for you. Personally, I use a combination of Microsoft To Do and Post-its. Seriously, I don't know what I would do without Post-its. A very good strategy when it comes to working in general is to practice and develop deep work. 
For me, this is using a combination of music and deep concentration. I put on my headphones, listen to some music that's really gonna allow me to deeply concentrate and make sure that I've removed all of my distractions. I put my phone on do not disturb, I turn down anything that could possibly be a notification, and most of the time, all of my lights go off except for my ambient lighting. So really, this is gonna vary from person to person, but whatever is gonna allow you to go into deep work mode where you're really concentrating on your work, removing all the distractions that are around you, make sure that you implement those. Okay, next up is inspiration and research. This is something that every designer should be doing every single day. There are endless ways to get inspiration and do research. Pinterest will have you covered most of the time, but there's an endless amount of resources to get inspiration from. Make sure that you're reading books and magazines, get off the computer and draw on paper, go outside, hike, explore culture, and talk to other designers. I spend a huge amount of time on Pinterest and just about anything that you're looking for for inspiration, it's on there. One thing that I really enjoy doing is looking for poster designs that I can reverse engineer. This means looking for posters where I see a technique being used. And I can say to myself, oh, how can I use that technique that they're doing to do something else in my own work? And within all of the different areas where you can be inspired, there's different levels in those areas as well. I can be looking for poster layout inspiration and find something completely different like a really awesome color palette. So make sure that you're setting aside specific times just for doing inspiration and research search and not design work. And remember the inspiration goes beyond your screens. All right, next up is understanding typography. This is one of the most important things that you need to understand before you start design school. Now for me personally, the very first class that I took was typography. Now I can't tell you how invaluable this was. When I first started this class and I walked into that classroom for the first time, all I could think to myself was, I know so much about Photoshop, I'm gonna blow all my professors away. Okay, that is true. I did know a lot about Photoshop, but I knew nothing about design. At the time, I thought to myself, there's an entire class dedicated to typography. This is going to be a huge waste of time. Yeah, I was pretty stupid. I learned so much in that class, and it's amazing how much I still apply today to all of my projects based on what I learned in that class. You've gotta learn how to select appropriate fonts, and you've gotta understand the anatomy of type. You've gotta master kerning, letting, and tracking. You're gonna be using all of these techniques when you're in your other classes putting together your layouts. Your typography class is probably gonna be your most fundamental class that you take. So even before you go to your first class, make sure that you have at least some basic understanding of how typography works. Next up is color theory. Now, in my personal opinion, I didn't learn a single thing about color theory at all until I was in design school. So I think that it is a valuable place to learn it, but I don't think that it's entirely necessary to do a deep dive on it, just learn the basics. Maybe just learn about color relationships, complementary colors, and the psychological impact of colors. There's an endless amount of resources out there on color theory. I'm gonna be making a few videos of my own pretty soon. Okay, this next one can be a little bit challenging for a lot of designers, and it's networking and collaboration. Whether you put together a really good core network of friends while you're in school, or you're very extroverted and you wanna go out there and network with other designers, it is very important to have somewhat of a network where you can kind of help each other stay focused and updated on what's going on currently. There are a lot of designers out there who love to teach new designers. I encourage you to connect with them, talk with them, interview them. You can learn so much from seasoned veterans that have been in the field for a while. You can even work on collaborations with people, but the key thing here is to really develop those people skills so that you can build a strong network. And it doesn't have to consist of only designers. Make sure that you're networking with other professionals that can lead to work down the road. So much of what you're gonna be doing is all about building relationships with people. That can be a tough thing to grasp for new designers because we just want to work on our stuff and we want to do it exactly the way that we want to. However, like I said earlier, you're learning to solve problems. So making sure that you're staying open to feedback and keeping an open mind about your work is really going to take you far as a designer. All right, and the last thing I want to talk to you about is staying up to date with current trends. Make sure you understand how technology is advancing and evolving. I highly encourage continuous learning, whether it's YouTube, online courses, or going to the library and reading a book that's 20 years old on design. You never know what you're gonna learn or what's going to inspire you. Read blogs, go to seminars and events, go outside, be inspired by nature, do anything that you can to sharpen your skills. And also when Adobe releases a new tool, check out videos on it, dig into it yourself, see what the tool can do, see if you can discover something about that tool that wasn't covered in the video that you watched. Be 
experimental with your work and with your mind. Put together things that you have never seen put together before, it doesn't mean they've never been put together before, but you've never done it. Who knows, you could start a whole new design trend by accident. One last bonus tip that I want to give you is don't be locked into one style of design. This has almost become a running joke at this point, maybe not so much anymore because we've kind of moved away from this, but it used to be that so many designers wanted to go into the field to create album covers. And of course, there is a huge demand for album covers. But unless you're going to be working on developing some strong connections in the music industry, and that is what you want to do, make sure that you're staying open to other disciplines in the field of design. When you're in the classroom with your professor and the rest of your peers, stay open to all of their advice. You're going to be surrounded by people who mostly want to help you, so make sure that you always stay open to that feedback. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to post them down in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer any questions and give any advice that I can. Please like and subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.